Nam, adar sulha misa ashara. So lesson 15, alhal. So this is a nahu topic. Okay, as opposed to isim fa'il and isim maf'ul, they are the sarf topic, but this is nahu, the syntax. Okay, but we will use the two sarf topic in this lesson. All right. So alhal, what is alhal? Literally, alhal means condition. For example, we say kaifa haluka. How is your condition? How are you? Kaifa alhal. Okay, what is the condition or how is the condition or how are you? You say kaif al-hal. Nah. But here al-hal is the nahu topic, condition. So condition here, okay, let us look at the example, then I will explain what is this hal. Look at the example, the first example. We say, Qara'a at-talibu al-kitaba jalisan. Qara'a at-talibu al-kitaba jalisan. Okay, first look at the first three words. So this is a, a, a simple sentence. The student read the book. Okay, done. That is your normal sentence. Normally we stop here. Or you can add harful jar. Fil baiti, fil maktabati, fil fasli. That is your normal sentence. Today we are going to add just like adverb. Uh, you want to add an adverb to your sentence. So how do you add an adverb to your sentence? Is by using this topic hal. So how what how 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 uh how were you reading that book, or how was he? Okay, uh, when he read the book, so he's okay. What what about him? So here they say, "Qara'atalibul kitaba jalisan." Okay, so what is this word jalisan? Is this isim fa'il or isim maf'ul? Jalis. Okay, is this isim fa'il? Or isim maf'ul? Fa'il. Ah, this is isim, this is isim fa'il. Correct. This is isim fa'il. So what is the meaning of jalis? The one who sits. The one who sits. So yes, correct. So jalis is the one who sits. So in this jumla, this word, the one who sits is referring to whom? Is it referring to the talib or referring to the word kitab? Talib. Of course, it, it refers to the word talib. Uh, that is the most suitable uh, pair. A talib jalis. So, what is the meaning of the jumla? The jumla says, a talib, he read the book. So, how was he when he read the book? Jalisan. He was sitting. He sat, he, he while, while he's, he, uh, how do you say this in English? Uh, he sat reading. He, did, he, did, he read the book while he was sitting. That is the meaning of jalisan here. Okay, so if you look at the explanation, they said that the word jalis is called al-hal. So this is again the grammar topic. It is called the hal. So for every hal, you want to put a hal in the sentence. You need to make sure that this hal, this hal, this word must refer to one word in the sentence. So in this case, this hal refers to the word talib because it explains what about the talib when he read the book? He was sitting. Okay, so this is called the sahibul hal. Again, this is called sahibul hal. Sahib literally means owner, the owner of the hal. So this is the hal. Who is the owner of this hal? Who is the one who jalis? Who is jalis? Talib. All right. So again, in every sentence, whenever sorry, whenever you use a sentence that contains a hal, you need to have the sahibul hal. That is number one. And number two. This hal must explain the sahibul hal, must explain the sahibul hal while he was doing this. There must be a fi'il. Okay, so basically there are three things that you need, at least there are three, three things that you need to have in your sentence if you want to use hal. First is the verb, It must have, you must have the verb. Okay, you must have a verb. Number two, you must have the hal. And number three, you must have the person that you are explaining. The hal is explaining, right? So if you have these three, then the sentence is correct. Qara'at talibu al-kitaba jalisan. Okay, that is num example number one. Example number two is similar to example number one. The difference is that now they change the word talib, one talib, two, ta two talibs. They want to say two students. Now let us look what will happen to your hal. Qara'at talibani al-kitab. So the two students read the book. Okay. That is the basic sentence. Now we add a hal uh, in the to the sentence. Jalisaini, jalisaini. So if you look at the word jalis, if you look at the word jalis, this is 
also an isim fa'il because the wazan is fa'il. Okay, the difference is that you have aini in the end. So what is this aini? This represents, what does this represent? How many people, Jalis? Two people. Two people, yes. Two Jalis. So you have two. So Jalis Saini. So why two? Why do you change from Jalis to Jalis Saini? Because the Sahibul Hal, the, the, the one who is sitting is not one person anymore. Now it is two. So Talibani, two people, two students. Therefore, the Hal needs to be changed to two as well. All right? So this is a, a bit similar to adjective. When you put an adjective in the sentence, the adjective must match the one that you are describing uh, in terms of muzaka, mufrad, and also musanna and jama. So hal is similar. You need to change to two as well. Okay. Now look at number three. Qara'at tulabul kitaba jalisin. The same sentence, but now they replace the word tulab to tali to tulab jama. And what will happen to the hal? Jalis for one. Jalisaini for two, Jalisina. So now they need to change to Jama as well because the Sahibul Hal is Jama. So we say Qara'atulabu al Kitaba Jalisin. Okay? So that is uh, about the Hal, the relationship of the Hal and the, uh, the, the Sahibul Hal. They must match. Okay? Mufrad with Mufrad, Musanna with Musanna, Jama with Jama. Okay? We look for so now, number four, this is Ra'a At-Talibu Al-Mu'allimata. The Talib saw the teacher. Okay, now you have a hal. At the back of the sentence, you have another hal. The hal is Masrur. Masrur, okay. Now, what is this word? Is this Isim Fa'il or Isim Maf'ul? Jalis Isim Fa'il. But what about Masrur or Masrura? Maf'ul. Ah, this is now Isim Maf'ul. So what is the meaning of masrura? Masrur from the word surra means made happy. You made somebody happy. You make someone happy, you, you say surra. Uh, so when you say surra, sorry, sarra. When you say sarra to make someone happy. Surra, uh, and when it becomes masrur. To be made happy. To be made happy, yes. That is the literal meaning of the word masrur, to be made happy. But of course, when we translate the word masrur or when you refer to the dictionary, they will never translate the word masrur to be made happy. They will just say happy because happily, because somebody who is made happy is happy, correct? Mm -hmm. So that is why in the dictionary, they just say is happy. But when we know this is a same of all, then you know the the actual translation is to be made happy. So Ra'at Talibul Mu'allimata Masruran. He was she was made happy. Uh, he was she was happy or she was happy. Just to make it simple. So the student saw the teacher. So when the student saw the teacher, what 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 about the teacher? What is his hal? What is her condition? She was masrur. She was happy. Yes. So this is the meaning of the sentence. So the masrur masrur is hal. Masrur is the hal. For which word? What is the sahibul hal? Who was happy here? Is it the student or the teacher? It is the teacher, the mu'allima. So since the mu'allima is now mu'annas, you see this mu'annas, the ta, therefore the word masrur needs to be to have ta marbuta. So that is why it becomes masrurah and not just masrur. As opposed to the first example, jalis. And this is muzakkar because the sahibul hal is muzakkar. That is why it is muzakkar. But since the sahibul hal for number four is mu'annas, then masrur need to be changed to mu'annas. Okay. So now we have seen that hal need to match the sahibul hal in terms of muzakkar and mu'annas, in terms of musanna, and also in terms of jama. Okay. So you must make sure that both of them match. Number five. So now number five, this is similar to number four. The difference is that they replace the word mu'allima to musanna. Ra'at talibu al mu'allimataini. So the student saw the two teachers. So how were the two teachers when the student saw them? They were happy. Masru rataini. Uh, so here it is now musanna. Masru rataini. Uh, this is with yanun because this is musanna. Mu'allimataini is also musanna. 
you have this ta masrurata because it is now for female for muannas so so you must match uh, the word sahibul hal and number 6 ra'at talibu al muallimat so the student saw the teacher so now this is jama muallimat therefore the sahibul the hal sorry the hal must be in the jama form as well and also in the muannas form that is why the hal here is masrurat masrurat all right so that is the first part of the lesson okay you must now we we understand what is hal hal is actually the word that explains the sahibul hal the ex, the word that explains sahibul hal when an action is done so when you do an action something happened to that person what happened to that person that is doing an action okay so that is the first part of the lesson for hal and sahibul hal any question before i go to the second part no no okay so if there's no question then i will go to the second part now the second part of the lesson is about the hukum or about the arab arab or the hukum of the word is it marfu is it mansub or is it majrur so look at the sentences again look at this all this hal okay what do you think is this marfu mansub or majrur which one mansub mansub yes so hal is always mansub so when it is mansub you need to refer to previous lesson where i mentioned about the alamat of mansub remember when we learn maf'ulun fihi when we learn maf'ul mutlaq uh, we talk we did talk about mansub so mansub so if you still remember mansub what are the alamat what are the signs fatha uh, the first sign it is always a fatha so you end it with a fatha yes that is the first sign what is the second alamat the second sign when a word is mansub other than fatha the ya the ya remember the ya when it is musanna muslimaini you add aini in the end mm. yes the ya so for example muslimaini when this is musanna this is if the word is musanna for example we say mus muslimaini uh, we don't say muslimani we say muslimaini so the ya here is referring to this ya when it is musanna okay when it is mansub musanna and mansub you need to use the ya version instead of the alif version muslimani okay so this is related to previous lesson on Maf or musan um, sorry mansu and there is another reason why do you use ya why the alamat is ya is when the word is jama muzakkar salim when the word is jama muzakkar salim for example muslimina uh, this is jama muslimina instead of muslimuna we say muslimina we use this ya so when why why do you use the ya instead of muslimuna instead of the wow? Uh, it is because of this musanna. Oh sorry, because of this mansu. Okay? So mansu. So yeah, now we have two alamat, two signs. First is alif al fatha, sorry. Second is the ya. Okay. What else? We have other alamat for mansu. Another alamat for mansub is kasrah. Kasra e. Kasra. Okay, when is this? This is if the word is jama muannas salim. For example, the word muslimat. This ta. So for the word muslimat, it does not accept any fatha. If you use the first alamat, you should put a fatha right but for for jama mu'anna salim this word or uh, jama mu'anna salim words they do not accept fatha so since they do not accept fatha when it is mansub what should we do we should 
put a Kasra instead. Uh, this is a replacement for Fatha. So this is the lesson on uh, Mansub. So you might want to refer to previous lesson, okay, for Mansub. Uh, here we need to, we, we just need to uh, implement all this, all this knowledge in the topic of Al-Hal. Okay, for example, if you look at the first sentence again. Qara'a at-talibul kitaba jalisan. So the hal is jalis. So now we know oh, this is a hal and a hal must be mansub. So when it is mansub, what is the alama? We always start with the first alama, which is fatha. So can we put the fatha in the jumla? For the word jalis, yes, you can say jalisan. So therefore, we end the word with the fatha. Okay, if you can put a fatha, then you put the fatha. You use you use the original sign of the mansub of mansub, which is a fatha. That is why we say jalisan and not jalisun or jalisin. That is number one. But if you look at number two, jalisaini, this is also hal, and this must be mansub as well. But why don't you see any fatha? Why don't they use fatha? So in this, this is. Musanna. This is two, Musanna. Since this is Musanna, you need to refer to this again. So when a word is Musanna, where is it? When it is Musanna, ah, this one. So when the word Mansub is Musanna, what is the sign? The sign is no longer a Fatha. So what is the sign? Yeah. The sign is the Ya. Yes, correct. The sign is a Ya. So what does this mean? It means that you have to use the Ya version of the word. So the word Jalisaini there is another version which is Jalis Jalisani. So which one do you use? Since this is Mansub, therefore you have to use the second version which is with the Ya. Okay, that is why we say Jalisani. We don't say Jalisani. That is for example number two. Example number three. This is now Jama. Muzakar. This is for Muzakar. So we use Jama Muzakar Salim. So for Jamak Muzakar Salim, do you use a fatha? Let us check again. For Jamak Mu'anna Salim, uh, sorry, Jamak Muzakar Salim. Here, yeah, this one. So for Jamak Muzakar Salim, we don't use fatha. Instead, we use a ya as well. Okay, we use ya as well. So we go back to the word Jamak Muzakar Salim, Jalis. So this word, we have two versions. First, Jalisuna. Just like with the word Muslimuna. And the second one is Jalisina. So the question is, which one do you use? Jalisun or Jalisin? Uh, that is why we need to know. Oh, this is Hal. So Hal, what is the hukum? The hukum is Mansub. So since it is Mansub, so we check. What is the sign that you should use? Uh, so here they say, oh, Jamak Muzaka Salim, you use the Ya. So therefore, the choice of word, the correct word that you should choose is Jalisina instead of Jalisina instead of Jalisun because this is the one that you should use when it is in the Mansub condition or state of Mansub. Now, let us look at number four. The word, the Hal is Masrura. Uh, this is, is this Musanna? No. Is this Jama? No. So since this is not Musanna, this is not Jama, we use the original sign which is a Fatha. So that is why we say Masruratan and not masruratin or masruratan. Okay, so this is hal, mansub, using a fatha. But if you look at the second one, this is, even though this is musan, mu'annas, but this is now two, musanna. So since this is two, musanna, we go back to the to this lesson. Where is the musanna to here? So musanna, you use the ya version. So that is why in the jumla we say, Masruratayni. Here, this, this is the ya. Okay, instead of using the alif version, Masruratani. No, we don't say Masruratani. We have to say Masruratayni because this is in the state of Mansub. Okay, using the ya. And what about number six? Ra'at talibu al-mu'allimati. Now, this is jama' but jama' mu'annas. Jama' mu'annas salim. So, what about jama' mu'annas salim? Can we use a fatha? Can we say masruratan? So by right, we should, should we should put the fatha because that is the original sign of mansub. So we say jalisan. Here we should say masruratan. 
but according to the rules it says that jama muannas salim does not accept any fatha you will never find a fatha word uh, jama muannas salim that ends with fatha never so what happen what will happen is that you have to replace the fatha to a kasrah you have to replace it to a kasrah only for this word jama muannas salim so that is why for the last word we don't say masruratan no we change to masruratin because this is mansub and this is at the same time it is jama muannas so jama muannas salim when it is mansub you need to end it with a kasrah okay so this is the second part so this is the second part is more related to this mansub marfu and majrur so to understand that you need to refer to the previous lesson in uh, mansub marfu and also majrur all right any questions for both parts in uh, hal but for your exam as long as you can yes as long as you know how to how to use a hal in sentence which is the first part of the lesson that is fine make sure it is musanna it is jama it is muannas it is muzakkar then you are fine and make sure you use either isim fa'il or isim maf'ul Okay, with regard to the second part, manso majrur, most of the time we will not ask you that. Okay, but sometimes they and they do ask. Okay, so please look at the two lesson, two two parts again. Okay, so if there is no question, we look at the kaida. So in the kaida, this is similar to what I have explained just now. They say alhal. What is alhal? As alhal is first isim. It is a noun, and from what from what I explained. You can use either isim fa'il or isim maf'ul to use it as a hal. Most of the time, it will be either isim fa'il or isim maf'ul. You can you can use other 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 words, other nouns, but let us just to make it simple. We use isim fa'il and isim maf'ul. Number two, it is mansub. Uh, this is regarding the hukum. It is always mansub. So when it is mansub, you end it with what? With a fatha, an, or with a ya, or with a kasra. And then they said, "You buy yinu hala sahibihi." So this hal explains hala. It explains the condition of its sahib, the owner. So as we have seen in the examples, there must be an owner to the hal. Who is that? When you say jalis, who is that person or talib? Okay. When you say masrura, who is that person? The teacher, muallima. So there must be the sahibul hal. The sahibul hal must be in the sentence. So it explains the hal of the sahib, waqta wuku el fa'li, the time when an, an action takes place. Wuku, when it takes place, takes place al fa'li. So there must be a verb as well. So there must be a verb. So this is the definition of a hal. You need three components. You need hal. You need the sahib, sahibul hal, and you need a verb. Okay, and then. They said, "What da iman ma?" And always, usually, da iman ma is usually. Ya til hal, the hal. Why do you need a hal in a sentence? The hal comes bi masa as bi masa ba as jawab as an answer. So most of the time, you can use hal to answer this jumla. Jumla istifhamia. Jumla istifhamia mean a question. So the question, for example, they use the word kaifa. Adat here is referring to the word that you use in that question. Which is using kaifa. Wa ala sabi mil misal. For example, ala sabi mil misal. For example, the question is kaifa kara at talibul kitab. How did the student read the book? How did the student read the book? So you want to answer that question. You add a hal. Add you add an adverb to the sentence. So we say kaifa kara a yaku nu jawabu. So the jawab will be kara at talibul kitab. How was it? How was he? Jalisan. So this jalisan is to answer the question kaifa. Okay, so that is why you need to have hal in your sentence. You need to explain how kaifa. And finally, they said wa yakunul halu mutabiqan li sahibihi. Hal needs to match. Mutabiq means match or agree. So they must. It must be. It must agree to its sahib to the sahib. So that is why if the sahib is muzakkar, your hal must be muzakkar. So here they say fit tazkir, tazkir what taknis, tazkir muzakkar, taknis muannas. So when it is muzakkar, sahibul hal muzakkar, hal must be muzakkar. Sahibul hal muannas, hal must be muannas. Wal ifrat, 
ifrad is referring to mufrad. When the sahibul hal is mufrad, the hal must be mufrad. What tasnia? Tasnia is referring to musanna too. Okay, so both must be similar. Wal jama. So if the sahibul hal is jama, the hal itself must be jama. Alright. So this is the qaida. This is the explanation of the topic al hal. Nah.